Welcome back to The Muse and Greg. Make sure you like and subscribe for more great content like this. So today we're looking at the effects of a computer controlled turbo wastegate on a Gen 4 Mitsubishi Pajero. This is a 2012 NW model, but the same principles will apply to many other modern turbo vehicles. The wastegate on a turbo is a device which limits the amount of pressure, or boost, the turbo produces. It works by opening a valve which allows some of the exhaust gases from the engine to bypass the turbo, thus preventing the turbo from generating any more boost. In years past, this was a simple pressure valve connected to the outlet of the turbo. But on the Pajero, and likely on many other modern turbo vehicles, the wastegate is controlled by the ECU, or the engine control unit. This gives the computer a lot more flexibility over how the turbo boost is used, and as I mentioned in a previous video, in the case of direct injection vehicles with a partly clogged inlet manifold, the ECU can simply demand additional boost from the turbo to ensure the engine still gets the right amount of airflow. However, for home modders, this also means you can't simply insert a pressure bleed valve quickly to increase the turbo boost like we could in years past. Today we're going to be taking the Pajero out for a quick run with three separate cameras rolling. One's going to be looking at the gauges inside the vehicle, another will be in the footwell showing the accelerator position inside the vehicle, and the last one is going to be filming the wastegate position from under the bonnet. This will allow us to see just how easily the ECU can compensate for changes in engine condition and driver behaviour, how often the ECU is fiddling with the wastegate under normal driving conditions, and potentially how the vehicle behaviour could be modified by an ECU remap. Okay. Take note at this point the position of the wastegate actuator. These markers won't be perfect because there's a little bit of wobble once the engine starts, but it's still a guide. But when the engine's off and the wastegate's in the fully closed position, you can see the nut is sitting just below the bottom of that bracket. Let's go. As soon as the engine starts, we see that the wastegate partially opens, even just when the engine's idling. In the moment, we've got just over, just over 229,000 Ks on the clock. And because you've got vehicle speed, um, we don't need fuel economy. Let's put in that case, let's put the taco down here. RPM, okay. I reckon with those two, that should probably do what we want. Probably don't actually need to see the speedo. Just look at those ones there. So you can see the turbo spooling up. So as I said, the ones you've you got vehicle speed here, engine RPM, um, airflow, and turbo boost, so the, the pressure in the manifold. And you've obviously down on the gauge in the corner here, got the um, boost engine boost as well. So what we're particularly looking for is as you start to accelerate, you'll see the um, the, the, the boost pressure uh, max out as the base go. So I'm just going to put my foot down a little bit. Let's see if we can. Okay, so. Okay, so that's flat to the floor now, and we're at about 15 pounds, 16 pounds. Better watch the speed, because this is only a 60 zone. I might go out onto the highway actually and do this, it might be a lot easier. Again, as we said earlier, we see while the car's just idly, the wastegate is still in the partially open position. Okay, we're off now. down at 229 as I think I mentioned earlier I did a full manifold clean no I didn't mention this earlier it was a previous video um, I did a full manifold clean at about 200,000 just the 200,000 case when I did a, a full strip down tore it down um, did a physical removal and clean then I did a follow-up test about um, 6,000 k's later um, where I put the camera down there and had a bit of a look at the way that the manifold was performing how much it had blocked up or not and um, now we've done around about 20,000 k's. So, okay, so, oh, look at that, 20 pounds. Notice that boost changing? Got to jump in front of this truck. Okay, that's interesting. Put the camera under the bonnet, stays put. Okay, so we're just cruising now, just on 100. Probably see what I'm doing with my foot now. Just a slight bit of extra throttle. So I'm going to overtake a car now. So I'm going to come out a little bit of extra power. Okay, that's flat now. That's right at 20 pounds. And it started to wind back. Okay, so that's. Oh, I'm going to slow down a little bit. Okay, so you 
you see how it behaves? It spools up and holds fairly high pressure and then it starts to wind the boost back. Um, and that was going to be really interesting to see whether we see the wastegate opening when that pressure is, is dropping back or whether it's simply that the turbo doesn't have enough um, airflow to be able to maintain boost at those high revs. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the wastegate. So what have we learned from all this? As you would have seen, this test disproved some of my own assumptions, which is why data-driven opinions are so important. The biggest surprise to me was that the wastegate stays partially open almost all the time. I hadn't expected this at all. I suspect this half-open wastegate has been done to reduce emissions, improve fuel economy, and perhaps reduce the jerky performance around town which diesels can sometimes have. However, a partially open wastegate under any degree of acceleration is going to dent what performance could have been available if only the ECU had closed the wastegate and used that darn boost. You would have noticed that I hit about 20 psi under heavy acceleration and that this wound back as engine RPM increased. But if the wastegate had closed earlier, I dare say that the boost could have been maintained, which could be really useful if you're trying to overtake someone on the highway. Of course, if you're considering an ECU remap for your Pajero, you should be pretty excited now, because you should be able to tell that this very conservative wastegate performance means that an ECU remap would have a great potential to improve performance simply by modifying the wastegate behaviour. But I'm really interested to know what you think about this data, because I'm sure I haven't exhausted all of the information to be gleaned from this data. What do you think? Did this video confirm or disprove some of your own theories about how the ECU controls turbo boost? Did you notice anything else which didn't make sense and gives you some other ideas? Let me know in the comments below because I'd love to discuss this further. In the meantime, please make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss my next video, and I'll catch you next time.